love wherever it needs to see it. Uh... Ah, here we go. Going to display. Perhaps not. Perhaps it won't display. Why is it displaying <laughs> like that? Hold on. Why is it displaying like that? What the fuck? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Dolphin is such a nightmare to work with, genuinely. Dolphin fighting me non-stop. Yeah, hold on. It's been a long time since I've used Dolphin, so... I just don't have a reason to, like, emulate Wii games ever. I just don't own a copy of this game because, I don't know, never even seen one in the wild, so... I remember seeing an ad for this one back in the day.
GameCube Wii emulator, emulator I've used is Nintendon't on the Wii itself because I wanted to play Mario Kart Arcade GP2. Huh. I know that's like common for a lot of uh, Nintendo's uh, arcade games at the time. I remember this game's controls being really weird. I've kind of mapped to how I remember them working. Okay, there's just a cap button. guy we feeling? Oh my god. <laughs> that is a character design and a half. How's the audio, by the way? I don't really have, like, a, a way to gauge it. It was a little bit uh, loud. I, I, did, I took a quick listen on my phone. Hey! So let's see, we got red hair. Um, not feeling any of these guys. I think, I think we go with red hair. I think we, I think we go with this guy. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay, I am curious what the starter deck is. This is something I'm gonna have to train myself to remember to do at the beginning of all these games. Because the starter deck is either like... Like, kind of... Sort of passable with a couple good staples in it. Or the most abysmal piece of dog shit you've ever seen. Oh... Oh, no. Yeah, this one, this one's abysmal dog shit. Already, we're over 40 cards. Why are we over 40 cards? Um, I'm gonna drop some cards. We are not playing that. What? All of, we have singleton cards. Why would we want an equipped monster to gain 900 attack for each card in either graveyard that has the same name as it? What? We have like three copies of this and that's it. And I don't want to play three copies of this. I actually want to play less copies of this, admittedly. Um, yeah, that'll be one of the cards we drop. We want to get as close to absolute, like, minimum deck size as we can. For consistency, mainly, but also because, like, like, these cards are not cards we want to see, generally speaking. Um, yeah, I don't see Kishido Spirit being very helpful. We have, like, bad trap cards. Um, honestly, not really. Our trap lineup's, like, fine. So, we're gonna get rid of Kishido Spirit. Um... Okay, yeah, that's that's good enough, I suppose. All right, off to the story mode. Let's see. Announcing the opening of the Duel of Legends Cup. Uh, come, all you proud, strong duelists, demonstrate your power. The victor is promised a position far more prestigious than that of Duel King and with it shall receive untold power and wealth. 
this was the written invitation, which... Okay, why is it going so slow? Uh, I should explain that this game is not emblematic of anything that happens in other Yu-Gi-Oh games. There is no other game that is styled like this one, which was made it really weird that I kind of got it out of the raffle immediately. Also enclosed with a portable, arm-equipable, personal digital assistant. As Tom reads the enticing invitation, his duelist soul is awakened and his blood begins to boil. You know, that is how it feels when I'm dueling. The location of the event is Ragnarok. It went too fast. It is not Kaiba. No, by 5Ds, Kaiba is long dead. Deck in hand. Okay, yeah, whatever. Uh, 5Ds is like hundreds of years in the future, I think. This is like super future Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, this guy's name is Surter. Okay. Welcome, duelists. My name is Surter, the host and organizer of the Duel of Legends Cup. Firstly, I'd like to thank all you proud duelists for gathering here. Hey, Surter, I have some questions for you. Well, well, if it isn't the old king, you may speak, Jack Atlas. I am listening. I don't know how much of this I should even explain. Like, I know some of the story for 5Ds. Keyword being, like, some. Um, I've played one of the other games that features the storyline for 5Ds, and that's <coughs> that storyline is, like, really good. So I don't want to, like, spoil it. But, you know, I feel like I should explain who the characters are when they come up, at least. Oh my god, this guy's fucking haircut. I, this guy's game original. I don't know who he is. Um, let's see. No need for the old. I'll be back on the throne in no time, just as soon as I've defeated Yusei. This guy's like the main rival from 5Ds. I think this game takes place at the midpoint of 5Ds, if I remember right. Like, a little bit over the midpoint. Or maybe it's under the midpoint. Maybe it's at, like, the, the end of the Fortune Cup. I'm not really sure. So the current king, Yusei Fudo, is here, too. This is destined to be a splendid event. Ugh, who cares about that? What I want to know is what you meant in the invitation about wealth and power in a position more prestigious than Duel King. Are you saying there's someone else more powerful than the king of New Domino City? Uh, also worth noting, I feel like I'm not doing Jack like a like that, you know, that much justice here uh, because he's like Australian in the English stuff, and it's fantastic. So the old king still has his pride. How fortunate! For pride is as important as cards for a duelist. Hey, is there really a position more high up than Duel King? Oh, th okay. This guy's like an early on, like, kind of villain. Um, I don't know. I think he turns hero later. I haven't really watched enough 5Ds yet to really know. Uh, he's like... Okay, of the first three episodes, which is about as much as I've watched, uh, Trudge here is two of the duels. But of course, the champion here will have the world at his feet. Right. If I win here, maybe Mina will. Oh, and he's constantly, like, creeping on this girl named Mina. I don't really know what's up with that. I know that's in the game that I played, though. Are you out of your mind? The champion would have to defeat the great Jack Atlas, which is simply not gonna happen. What? What? I was just... I just wanted you to see that I'm... Surter, when you talk about the whole world, do you think you're that powerful? You can choose to believe it or not. Did you hear that, Luna? The whole world! Awesome! These guys are just more main characters. Um, I don't know, twins. One of them plays Morphtronics. Uh, the other one is more story important than the one who plays Morphtronics, but also doesn't have a deck. It's kind of funny. Yeah, right, Leo. That's never gonna happen. Anyway, don't forget what we're really here for. Yeah, I know. Check for any information on Dark Signers, right, you say? Okay, so this is before the halfway point, because they're still dealing with Dark Signers. That's right. We're, we're not here for the tournament. But hey, that, does that doesn't mean we have to slack off in the duels, though, does it? Of course not. You must take every duel seriously. That's the duelist way. 
I'm really looking forward to our duel, you say. Akiza. Uh, she's like one of the people in one of the early tournaments and later goes on to be like a super main character. It's hard to like simplify these guys' arcs down to just they're a main character, but like, you know. Uh, Rally, what are you doing here? Uh, these guys are like side characters that are like only really relevant for like a very limited amount of time. Not just Rally. That's right. Tank, Nervin, how did you... We asked this guy to take us here. He snuck us onto the boat. Honestly, your friends are impossible. So, to explain these guys, uh... So, in the world of 5Ds, there are... Like, society is, like, super stratified. Where there's, like, slums, and then there's, like, rich people. And they're physically separated. Like, you're, if you're in the slums, you are not allowed to go to the rich neighborhoods. Or, like, the rich area of town. In fact, you're not even allowed to leave the slum area. You're basically enslaved in that area. Um, and 5Ds is all about, like, toppling that system. And uh, Yusei is one of the people from this system. Blister, is that right? Good luck, Yusei. I didn't get an invitation, so I can't compete. But I'll be rooting for you anyways. Okay, I won't fail you, Rally. That's the spirit, Sonny. Hey, hey, we're wasting time here. Will you start this tournament already? Oh, and just so you know, the champion's gonna be me. Uh, this guy is an annoying side character. The champion will not be him. <clears throat> ha! That's what you think. I'm the only real champion around here. Um, another character from the slum area. This is probably one of the most popular Yu-Gi-Oh! characters outside of the original series ever so um <laughs> we'll definitely be uh dueling him later i imagine Let's see i think not squire for it is i who shall be the victor i don't think i need to explain that this man is a side character that's more like it now your objective is to make it through to the end and face me i am waiting for you on the top floor of big dressel Totally butchered that pronunciation. I'm never sure how to say this. Ig Igdrasil? Ig Igdrasil? I'm not sure. The tower that stands before your very eyes is Igdrasil. The uh, there is only one rule in this tournament: you must re must reach the top floor of the tower. That is all. However, only those who are chosen may reach the top floor of the tower, and the strongest duelist of those chosen will face me in battle. If that person manages to defeat me, they shall be declared champion and shall receive the spoils of victory. Huh? The entrance to the tower is closed. How do we get in? To gain entry to Yggdrasil, you must duel on this island. The first to win will be the first to admit it. Or first to be admitted. I see. We'd have the weaklings first, eh? Activities on the island will be reported and managed by your PDA. Naturally, there can be no cheating. Of course, there is surely no one here in this gathering who would do anything so vulgar, am I right? You can get to your cards through the PDAs you're holding. For more information, just turn it on. Wow, this PDA sure is handy. Thanks, Crow. Farewell, Duelist. I now declare the tournament open. Let us pit our very souls against one another. Okay, then. Let's get going. You say, I'll smoke you. Wow, everyone's on the move. Let's get started. Um, so this game works really strangely. Shall we go, Mr. Alice? This is just gonna be everybody saying their stuff. Um, this game is like, like, I don't know what dis what made them decide on this. You're not coming? I see. Well, whatever. You have your own way of doing things, I guess. You say, let's get a move on. Right, I'm coming. I have a feeling we'll see each other again pretty soon. Would you tell me your name? I'm Yusei Fudo. Tom, I like that name. Do you? Right, I'm off. Well, I hope you do well, Tom. Through the 
the stage, you must move your character to the goal panel. Okay, so this thing is like really weird. This is basically like a board game. Uh, select a destination, press, press the A button to move the player character. Move the player character to the goal panel to clear the stage. AP is needed to move the player character. Spin the roulette to gain AP. After gaining AP, move with the control pad. You can move as far as AP allows, but not beyond an item or duelist. If you land on a panel with a duelist, the duel may start. When the duel to gain DP, DP is used to buy packs and recipes. The number of times the roulette has been spun is displayed to the right of the roulette. Moving on a normal panel uses one point of AP. Yeah, that's true. You know, most games are pretty addictive to making fun of the, uh, like, the player's name. So, yeah, now we can move two spaces. I don't get the point of this system. Um. Yeah, so, uh. Now we can move. Oops. Man, this game's awkward to control. There we go. Number on the item icon decreases, and if it's never reaches zero, it disappears. So we have, like, these four icons around the map. Um, those are the number of spins we get before the item disappears. Let's see. Paint a card or DP? 300 DP. I'll take it. One. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry, I need to beat you to add add bleh, to add to my list of victories. Well, considering the fact that you don't even have an icon, you know, probably not. For rock paper scissors in these games, I literally just hold like right for a while normally. Yeah, I'll go first. This game's, like, control setup on the Wii is really strange. Um, it uses the Wii Remote's D-pad to move, like, the, the, like, the cursor around for some reason. Honestly, I might normal summon that. Actually, yeah, I will. I want to draw a card. I don't care about taking some damage. Uh, and then the nunchuck has to be equipped, like, like attached at all times, and is used to scroll through card text. Uh, no. Sandy appears to be a killer from Dog and Rumpa, judging by the lack of features. Oh my god, you're right. Uh, that was a really bad draw. That's fine. I'm just gonna fissure that you a bow turtle. Gemini elf, pretty good. This only equipped to a warrior monster. A monster equipped with this card increases its attack by 700 points. Okay, so I think I think Axe Raiders are our best normal summon here. Now, this is, like, like kind of getting up there in terms of, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! games age. Uh, I mean, like, like, they stopped making the games right at the end of the 5Ds era, pretty much. There's one Zexel game, and there's one game that takes place in the Link era, and obviously we have Master Duel nowadays. Um, but, like, this kind of, like, bi-yearly release schedule on multiple different platforms thing kind of stopped... Uh, like a little bit after this game, especially here in the States. So a lot of games just don't have reliable translations. Gecky breaks pretty good. And normal Gemini Elf. Nope. Okay. I don't know why. Oh, I do know why, actually. I've been playing a couple of the, uh, the GBA games, and those games, for whatever reason 
start you on the show details button instead of on the attack button. So I just have to fix my muscle memory. This guy honestly, you know, not too hard. Thank God. Because our deck is kind of dog shit. It's really bad. destroy it. This card is bad. Okay. Ooh. I actually have a misprint of this card in real life. Uh, that like, the, uh, the foiling on it doesn't match up with any existing rarity. Generally speaking, uh, we want to aim for either getting them to exactly zero or as much damage as we can possibly do to them. It is too hot in my room to have my window shut. Hold on. Apologies for the, uh, the audio, but... Oh my god. I swear it was in, like, the 90s all day today. 90s, maybe even 100. Yeah, so the reason we want to do all that stuff is we want to, like, max out these bonuses in every duel we do. As much as we reasonably can. The foiling itself is, in fact, a rarity in Yu-Gi-Oh. That is how it works. Uh, it sounds a little bit insane, but that is actually how it works. Um, with a Yu-Gi-Oh card, you can tell what rarity it is right at, like, just without having to, like, look at a little dot in the corner or something. It's literally, like, if it's sparkly, it's secret rare. If it's got, like, gold, a gold name, and it's got, like, a flat, like, foiling on the card... That is ultra rare. Uh, no gold name, but it's still got the foiling. That's super rare, so on and so forth. Uh, the obnoxious Celtic guard that I own has a secret rare name and an ultra rare foiling on the card art. And I don't know why it's like that. <clears throat> wow, I am not getting that item. Cool. All right, let's fight Trudge. What is it? You want to duel me? Fine then, come on. It'll give me a chance to show off my skills to Mina. I don't think she's on this map, Trudge. Listen here, Trudge. There we go. That's what I like to see. <clears throat> oh, and since we're dueling like an actual like guy from the show now, we get to see these 3D animations between everything. Okay. Um... Yeah, okay, I'm gonna summon Rotting Captain. And then we'll just use it to summon Warrior Deck Rapper. Oh, hey, actually. You know what? Sure. Daka Gigo. Daka Gigo. I'm out. Holy shit, that guy's name is a tongue twister. Nope. Still used to those old GBA games. Okay. Yeah, now between every action, or... No, no, they simplified it for this one, okay. Is it just gonna be on summits? Yes, it is only on summons.
Uh, I don't want him to have that. So, no. Tribute summon Behemoth, but I'm just gonna go for Warrior Dag Ruffer. When it randomly selects one card from your hand, if it's monster card supposed to summon the field, it will not send it to the graveyard. That one? Oh, god damn it. Troop Dragon. Okay, um, we can deal with Troop Dragon. It'll summon two other Troop Dragons, but, you know, we'll just have to clear them all out. Uh, fun fact, in Japan, this game is voice acted, I'm pretty sure. At least the PSP ones that this game is, like, kind of a weird sequel to, uh, are voice acted. And when they brought them over here, they just figured, ah, fuck it, we'll just cut all the voice acting. We'll just, we just won't include any of it. Oh, hey, they do not. <laughs> Trudge doesn't have one. And now we get to see his whole deck. Ooh, he's bad. His deck is kind of somehow worse than mine? What the fuck? He's playing Ori Kalko's Shunros? Oh, most you control is for that way. So some card from your hand. Thousand pack for each monster your opponent controls. <clears throat> that means that one of the cards in his hand is probably a true dragon, because he wouldn't play just two. I get it, not having the budget for English voice acting, but they have to cut everything that was there. Yeah, there's like, I'm not really sure why, there's just like, just like this weird attempt to, um, scrub the Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game of all of its Japanese-ness around this time, uh, including the anime. It's actually, especially the anime. I mean, granted, that was the case for quite literally all um, like, anime, basically, at the time. You know, like, the further they can make it from, like, a Japanese thing, the better, you know? We'll just go ahead and grab back the Marauding Captain. Personally, I blame four kids, but, you know. Uh, Dead Company doesn't really do to complain about it anymore. Like, no nothing comes of it. Yeah, we're gonna watch him do that animation a lot if I don't start skipping that. I can apply to fix that. In fact, actually, I bet there is. I bet there is a patch I can apply to fix that. Gemini L. Wow, we actually get to use stop defense. That's funny. This is probably going to be the troop dragon. No. Uh, we can actually do something kind of funny with this. We can tribute someone Behemoth, 
And obviously, like, Trudge is just gonna die here, it won't matter, but if we only tribute one to Summon Behemoth, his attack goes down to 2,000 as opposed to 27. But if we attack this thing, it gets flipped face down, and then that resets. So I can just flip summon it later, theoretically, if there was a later, and uh, just gain all of his attack back because the card resets. Reminds me of Mega Man X6. That game actually did keep the Japanese voice acting. The expectation for GameCube and PS2 was all cut. Why? Okay, here. We can actually access our options here. Turn animation fast. Dual effects on. We don't want very fast. I remember very fast um, being like kind of ridiculous. Fast is like just right, if I remember right. Legacy Collection got the brought the voices back. That's pretty good. I think I own the X Collection for PS2. Yeah, I do. I haven't ever played very much of it. Because, like, I played through the first game, mostly, and I didn't really like it very much. I don't know. I thought it was kind of annoying <laughs> more than anything. X doesn't really, uh, get better. I've heard that, like, maybe X2 and X3, but once you hit X4, like, people really complain about that game onward. Let's see. Yeah, bye, Trudge. Yeah, we are not getting that... that item. Shop. Let's see what we can actually get now. Oh, this fucking song takes me back. Oh my god. Oh my god. Um... Way back in the day, there was like a Yu-Gi-Oh client uh, that fans made called YGO Pro Percy, I think it was. And this was the deck edit song in that, that program. Oh my god. <laughs> I used to fucking listen to this for unreasonable amounts of time while trying to, like, do stupid, janky shit in that game. <clears throat> it's fun. Okay, um... What have we got? Let's see, it looks like Dark Beginning 1, Duelist Genesis, Starter Deck 2010, and Limited Edition Pack. Don't miss out. Um... So I remember the thing about this one being, um... Like, the starter deck doesn't actually come with all the cards. It's like a pack made out of the cards in the starter deck. And the starter deck gets you, like, a playable enough little warrior strategy. But Duelist Genesis gets you potentially Stardust Dragon. So you know what? We're... We're buying some Duelist Genesis. And you know what? We'll, we'll buy our last two. As, or do our last two as these guys. 
Alright, what do we got? Uh, Dr. Cranium's pretty good out of this set. Psychic Overlord? Or Overload? Okay. Prevence! Okay, that's, that's huge. We want Prevens. Ooh, e -telly. We definitely want that. I don't know if that's legal in this game, but we definitely want that. Psychic Snail, very good. Shit actually goes too fast for me. Holy shit. Destructotron's a really good card. Sinister Sprocket. Okay, yeah, we did all right. We did all right. Ooh, Drunk Synchron's great. Drunk Synchron's really good. Uh... Twin Sword Marauder is one of the better cards in that starter deck. Okay, now we can actually, like, take a detailed look. Um, that card's terrible. We, this card's very good. It's just we can't really use it with anything. Um, Destructotron is really good. We're definitely playing that. Dr. Cranium, we're definitely playing. Um... Drunk Synchron for sure. You know, we'll probably play Jute Fighter. Krebens for sure. Psychic Snail, definitely. Although we still don't have a Synchro, actually. So, we'll have to make these changes later. Battletuned. Battletuned goes crazy early on in, like, limited formats. Oh, good. Okay. Emergency Teleport is at 1. So, that's all we need. That's the only copy we need to worry about. Twin Sword Marauder, like I said, good. We'll probably add that in right now. Um, Magic Jammer, maybe? Yeah, okay. We, we're getting the, the start of a, a good, like, psychic deck. Next two opinions usually range from okay to pretty good. Three and five are both very polar polarizing. X6 and seven are the infamous ones. Those who actually wanted to play X8 tend to like it. Um, I remember, I think it, I think it's X7 that has that boss that has no fucking uh, chill when it comes to his voice lines, right? It's the only reason I know about the later, like, X games. It's because of that boss. It's X7? Yeah, yeah. I don't even remember what that guy's name is. I just remember burn to the ground over and over and over again. Okay, let's see. Um, we don't want to put in Battle Tune or any of our tuners yet. Uh, just because we don't have a Synchro Monster. But we can put in Twin Sword Marauder. And probably Psychic Snail too, actually. Twin Sword, put in Psychic Snail, because it's a 1900, even if it doesn't do anything. Um, yeah, and we can just uh, remove these two. And honestly, I don't think we need Magic Jammer. Flame Heinard, forgot his Japanese name. Choose a VA with X, who in that game sounds like either whiny or dead. Quite the contrast. <laughs> That's great. Um, I think that's the main stuff we pulled that I can include right now. The rest of it's gonna have to wait until we get like an actual Synchro Monster. Once we get a Synchro Monster, we are golden. Alright, let's talk to this dude. What am I doing here? Mixing with satellite scum. Grr, it's all you say Fudo's doing. I'm sure. What is it? What are you looking at? You're friends with some of those scum, aren't you? I can see it in your beady eyes. You're making me angry. I'll make you beg for an early release. Uh, this guy is like a minor villain in like a random little side arc. Plays uh, like a infamously terrible mill deck called Iron Chain. But it does have a synchro, a pretty decent one at that. Iron Chain Dragon is uh, nothing to scoff at. Be 
because this game uh, exists during the time period that it does, we do have to deal with some really weird stuff involving synchro numbers. Uh, mainly the fact that uh, the average playable level 7 synchro has like 2400 attack, and the average playable like level 6 synchro has 25 to 2800 out of nowhere. I don't know why it's like that. Like, all the level 7 synchros I can think of that were playable from this time period, except for I think Dark Strike Fighter, are like 21 to 2400 for some reason. Oh, he's playing Iron Chain. Good, a deck I can beat. If you did not attack, you make your opponent send cards equal to the number of face of Iron Chain monsters you control from the top of their deck to the graveyard. No, that's fine. I don't care about that at all. Card is sent from your opponent's graveyard, your deck to the graveyard by a card effect, and put 300 damage to your opponent. I really don't care about that. Is that a fucking train? Yes. Yes, it is. Wonderful. Uh, Iron Chain Repair Man. When this card destroys the monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, inflict 300 damage to your opponent. Once per turn, you can special summon one level four lower Iron Chain monster from your graveyard. Except Repair Man. This card cannot attack the time you activate this effect. So he's, uh. He's what? End phase. Um. You know what? Yeah. I don't want him milling me. That sounds actually really annoying. And he didn't set any of the cards, so I'm not worried uh, about anything else. Oh, uh, let's check in some of the Pistolos here. Really do something about that Iron Chain Repair Man. Wow, those animations look really cheap. I'm pretty sure they just took them from the PSP games. He does not have an extra deck. He does not have Iron Chain Dragon. That's hilarious. Actually, yes, please. I would like to summon Sasuke Samurai. The fuck is that? Send an Iron Chain monster you control to the graveyard and put 800 damage on it. Just a terrible deck. Just all around. Poison chain. Um. I'll discard shield crush to stop that. That card becomes a problem if they get like multiple on the field, uh, because they stack. I'm pretty sure. Doesn't have anything that says. Yeah, they these things stack. So the more of them I get into the graveyard, the better. Okay, we're gonna grab back our Command Knight. Command Knight has like a funny little lock that he can do because while this card remains face up on the field, or while at least one other monster exists on your side of the field, your opponent can't select this card as an attack target. So if you get two of them on the field, your opponent can never attack over either of them. I would kind of prefer Mar Marauding Captain right now, honestly. Binding Chain. 
Cool. Very good. Thank you, Chief Armstrong. Damn, really close to killing. Um, not quite there, though. amount of damage possible. If I remember right, the game like tracks the amount, like what the highest amount of damage you've dealt is. Um, and it gives you rewards depending on how high you can push that number. Oh hey, we didn't take any damage. That's pretty good. beaten by this scum? Unbelievable. Wow, that really didn't have a reason to be there. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's, let's grab like a couple more packs. Oh, hey, more shit. Oh, right. Okay. The way this works is really weird. Um, so card packs cycle in based off of your total number of wins and it's like if you have a win count that's a multiple of like four this pack shows up it's very odd um situate myself here But we're just gonna go for more Duelist Genesis. Ugh, Try to get like Stardust, maybe. Dark Hunter is terrible, if I remember right. Telekinetic Shocker, good. Another Dr. Cranium, very good. Ooh, Magical Android, that's a Synchro. We've got a Synchro, okay. phase gain 600 life points for each face up psychic monster you control it is officially time for us to make a psychic deck <laughs> i don't know how easy it'll be for us to make that card with our current tuner lineup but uh we can try we can try i don't think we have like a level one tuner that we have easy access to So, we're just going to clear the deck. How do I menu, deck recipe, empty deck. There we go. Let's get our psychic dudes in here. So, we're definitely doing both of our Dr. Craniums. We're doing our E-Telly. And our Krebins, for sure. Um, definitely doing Marauding Captain. Absolutely doing Magical Android. Oh. Psychic Snail. Pass the ammo. Telekinetic Shocker. If I'm right, this card's like pretty good. Destroy that monster that attacked, then gain life points equal to its attack. Yeah, this card's good. We'll play it. I don't necessarily know if we have like enough Psychics to play it. 
Uh, Psy Station... No. Might fuck with our levels a little bit too much. We're definitely playing Obnoxious Celtic card. The card's decent enough. Um... Put it under 1900 meters, I suppose. Uh, enemy controller, we're absolutely playing. Dust tornado, we kind of have to. Fisher's good enough. Removal. DD warrior is technically removal. Uh, yeah, Dark Hunter's not very good. Darks do we even play? Not many. Not many. If they have any level 2s we can throw in that aren't tutors, we can play Junk Synchron. Nope, we're not playing that. Uh, shield Crush is what I wanted to add. We're definitely playing Spell Shield and 7 Tools. Anything to protect ourselves. Space Gate. When a monster to your opponent controls attacks or is attacked, place one gate counter on this card at the end of the damage step. During your main phase, you can send this card to the graveyard. Special summon one monster from your hand who's level. This card is terrible. Uh, we're playing Fiend Mega Cyber. He's a free special summon. We're definitely playing Warrior Lady of the Wasteland. And Twin Sword Marauder. Um... You know, I, I like this Dallas. He's good. Um, you know what? Yeah, Sasuke Samurai is a level 2. We could play Junk Sink Run. Uh, Exploder Dragon is removal. We'll play it. Destructotron we're playing. It's a psychic type. Um how many tuners are we playing? Not not a like a ton. But we could include like junk synchron, theoretically. This card is terrible. Okay. Card of Summon to change the defense position. Card is selected as attack target. Send up three cards and copy it into the graveyard because this card five is going to treat each of those cards. We're not playing that. We'll put in Command Knight. You know, why not? And, uh. I don't know. I'm at a loss for playables right now. Um, sure, we'll put in Junk Sync And then we'll just grab some, like, feeders, I guess. Um, Draffle. Any playable spells that I'm missing? Uh, Fighting Spirit's, like, okay. It's good enough. I guess we can put in Giant Soldier of Stone. Him and Krebens make, um, uh, Magical Android, which is good. Um, we've still got a, a lot of warriors. We can put that in. Four more cards. Monster with a thousand or less attack in our grave. I don't think we have that many good monsters with a thousand or less. Uh, 
Uh, it can bring back Exploder Dragon. Bring back Sasuke Samurai. It can bring back Dr. Cranium. Um... Oh, you know what? We'll put in Magic Drain. I didn't even notice we had that. How many darts do we have currently? Two... Uh, three? Four? We have four darts? Uh, you know what? We'll put in Dark Hunter. We pulled him. So monster you can do a second as attack target, you can change the target to this card. This monster comes loose. Okay, this card's not good. And I don't know. Dark synchro monster. Oh. That thing's light. But, hold on, Dark Sprocket is a level 1 tuner. Or Sinister Sprocket, sorry. Uh, I, th I think we play it, because most of our cards are level 4. So this does actually make Magical Android very easily. So we'll do that. We'll just do a couple of those guys to round it out. Or, yeah, 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 we'll do those, those guys. I was considering doing Warrior Returning Alive instead, but I'm more interested to see how Sinister Sprocket uh, does. Okay. Oh, what an intense expression. You seem like a serious duelist. I'm looking forward to seeing you and you say duel. That's it. That's all he had for me. Alright, MC, what you got? Now listen up, I'll tell you how I feel. To be called here not as an MC, but to demonstrate my ability as a duelist. Well, that feeling. Give me a break, organizer. I'm gonna have to host my own victory parade after I win here. Anyways, let's duel. Oh, that's cute. This guy shows up in a lot of, like, the Yu-Gi-Oh games and in the anime as just, like, a tournament announcer. And, uh, I don't know that they've ever let him duel before. Um, yeah, we'll go first. Okay, well, we've got Warrior Lady of the Wasteland, and we've got the Stalos. Oh, okay, we've got Krabbins. Uh... We'll just end on that. See what they do. I think the Stalos is the more. Um, oh. Oh, okay, he's just gonna clear his own field. That's hilarious. Uh, I think the Stalos is the better thing to work towards, generally speaking. But given what's about to happen, uh, I think I'm literally just gonna go for Marauding Captain. and we're gonna synchro. Effect monster's effect that requires only one coin toss is activated, call heads or tails, you can call it right, draw a card. That card is awful. Wow. Glad he revealed that really early, so I didn't have to worry about it. Okay. Uh-oh. That 
heads destroy all monsters you want to control. Discard two heads. Discard your card from your opponent's hand. One head destroy one card you control. Tails destroy your entire hand. Okay. That is so fun. Another one, of course. Him actually having two of these and having a guy that tosses a coin three times is so fucking funny to me. Um. Yeah, we care more about damage, I think. Uh, we're gonna fissure that guy. I'm not foreseeing anything in the future that's like gonna be hard to out. Nope, okay. I gotta remember. I just gotta match the A button. Another one. So discards a card from my hand. Okay, bye, Pistalis. Paths of Destiny. He might just die here. Of course he won't. Dr. Craney was so weak. Well, his stats were like 800 or something, but you know, I'm probably just thinking about his life point cost for his effect. Psychics are a really interesting deck um, at the end of the day. They have a... Uh, they're all about like balancing your life points. So a lot of the monster effects are like like they're about paying life points to do things. And then you have the synchro monsters and the traps which are about gaining life points. Uh, so you're kind of balancing using monsters and spell cards, and balancing out using, um, like, the synchros and the traps. Uh, the deck was really, really good when it released. Thus, a lot of cards for it are limited in this game. Uh, I guess I'm no match for a real duelist, but at least I'm an unrivaled MC! tournament seems so powerful. You look pretty tough yourself, but I can't allow myself to lose if I'm going to be the tournament champion, so come on, let's duel. Okay, Mr. Faceless NPC, I'm certain you will be champion, yes. Holy shit, he beat me in rock, paper, scissors, and he's going first. He knows what he's doing. Never mind, he's playing Ally of Justice. He has no fucking clue what he's doing. Oh shit, they gave him synchros. Well, I can get to Krevin's with this hand. I guess it's something. Oh, I did not mean to normal summon this dude. Oh well. It only occurred to me that I had telepathic power after I normal summoned him. Thousand arms. This card can attack all face-up light monsters your opponent controls once each. This card battles a non-light monster to destroy this card before damage calculation. That's hilarious. Face-up mo light monsters on the field destroy this card. Okay, this thing is so funny 
The thing about Ally of Justice is that in lore, they're meant to be a deck that, like, eats this specific light archetype. And along comes this motherfucker, and he's like, yeah, so, like, if there's a light monster on the field, I explode. Um... Yeah, we're getting Krebins. And then we're gonna pop that thing and gain our life points back. Oh, he's gonna attack me with that's an arms though. I'm I'm glad I activated that then. is a really good card for this point in the game. He can just negate every attack that's sent his way. What the fuck is this? Oh my god, wait, I do know what card this is. This card's actual name on its first print was After the Genocide. And they had to change it later. <laughs> Battles light monster, remove that monster from play after damage calculation. Why did he normal summon that? He's gonna force me to pay 800. I will gladly pay 800. Reminds me of Genocide City. So this time they finalized it before they realized what they were saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that card is uh, it's out there. It's one of the few Yu-Gi-Oh cards that has like such a drastic change after the fact. Um, you see this a lot with LOB cards mainly. Oh my God, that was a light monster. It's okay. I'm allowed to be a little bit stupid. Um as a treat. <laughs> okay, um, let's mess. I've still got Krebins up, which is like the main thing I care about, to be totally honest. I really should have just gone to battle, though. Yeah, they're gonna force me to pay more. This is the downside of, uh, Psychics as, like, a deck. You do end up paying yourself pretty damn low. No. So I don't. Okay, I'll have two dark. 
dark monsters like right after this. So I will be able to make use of Dark Hunter. Tribute summon the Stalos. Trigger the effect. Hit them for five. Nice. This thing is uh, gonna be a 2,000 attack meter when I normal summon it next turn. summoning this fuck-ass monster. I wish I had more light monsters so I could take advantage of its glaring weakness. Yeah, okay, we'll summon Dark Hunter. Time to, I, to hang up my cards and retire. Uh, let's go to the shop. Um. Okay, I think Duelist Genesis probably. Yeah. We really want to make our uh, psychic strategy. So, I didn't get any for um all three of these are 120. I don't know what's in any of the dark beginnings. I don't think anything in them is particularly good. Is this one? No, that one's 200. Oh my god! We might be able to get like a staple out of dark beginning one. So you know what? Let's let's try it. Let's get one dark beginning one. See if we can get like anything decent. Okay, we got the random glad piece that's in Duelist Genesis. Mind over matter is really good. Uh, dark resonator, excellent. Uh, Doctor Cranium, a third copy. Probably gonna put that in. Stardust. Oh my god, we have Stardust Dragon now. Uh, all of those cards. Oh no, actually, Giant True Nades, very playable. Okay, um. Dark Resonator, probably going in the deck. Um, Dr. Cranium, definitely the third one is going in the deck, yeah. Uh. Giant True Nade. Holy shit, Gear Town. Oh, I wonder if the Machina structure deck's in here. I wonder if I could build Machina. I don't know when this game released. <laughs> I don't know how far the cards go. Uh, this card is fascinating. Uh, so what it says, uh, the important part of the text is, when this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one ancient gear monster from your hand deck or graveyard. The old ruling of this card used to be that if you activated a copy of Gear Town while you already controlled Gear Town, because these are field spells, they replace each other, uh, the previous Gear Town is considered destroyed, so you got to special summon an ancient gear monster from your deck. Uh, it's sick as hell. It's so cool. Psy Impulse, tribute to Psychic Type Monster, return all cards to your opponent's hand with the deck, and then they draw three cards? No, we don't play this. 
Like, if searching was more... more of a thing in this game, I would consider it. Hey, Jay. I didn't want to start Alien Stump. You guys saw me with the puzzle. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we're just, we're just playing the, the Wii Yu-Gi-Oh game tonight. Uh, yeah, we just got the craziest pole imaginable. We have a Stardust Dragon now. It's gold for some reason. Uh, yeah, otherwise, um, yeah, we've got a couple new cards we can include. Eat your heart out, you say. We've got your, uh, your fucking dragon now. Um. Yeah, that's in the PDA. I don't know if we include Giant Turnane. We're not really hitting any back row that we're, like, really worrying about. Nor are we aggressive enough to be able to take advantage of the one turn you get off of Turnade to kill. So. I don't think we include it. Just yet. It is a good card to have around, though general. Uh, Dr. Cranium, we're absolutely including our third copy. I don't think we... Oh yeah, we did get Dark Resonator as well. I don't think we really got any other psychic normal summons that are really good. Stardust is going in for sure. Um... Yeah, we didn't get any other of our psychic normal summons. What can we drop now? I like the Sinister Sprock in the deck. He's actually working out quite well. We can remove like one of our less good normal summons, I suppose. And we can take out Axe Raider, I guess. Uh, oh, I still need, uh, like, if I got Black Rose and Ancient Fairy, I would still need, uh, Red Dragon Archfiend and Power Tool Dragon. And I, maybe Black Wing Dragon? I don't think Black Wing Dragon's in this game, actually, thinking about it. Yeah, because that's not even in Edison. That's, like, the, that set is the cutoff before... Uh, Edison format is considered. So. But, uh, we've got two synchros now, so. Uh, we gotta drop one more card. Uh, we can remove Sword of Dragon Soul. I don't see that ever being useful again. Still really monster heavy, but I mean, it's just what a deck is gonna look like when we don't really have that many good spell traps, I guess. put in Psy Station, but I don't think that'll actually be that good. We just don't have enough of our normal summons, like our big psychic dudes, to really make use of it, I think. At some point I'm gonna want Life Trancer, uh, but I don't think she's in the first set. Earthbound Immortal- oh, no. Why can't I go up here? Come on. There's like a weird amount of delay in this game's menus. Ah, okay, these panels use three AP each. Let's see, you're Tom, aren't you? I'm a ra I'm Rally, a good friend of Yusei. Nice to meet you. Obviously Yusei's gonna win, but I won't don't let that stop you. Right. Well, we don't want to get caught by any tournament staff, so we better get going. What? Okay. Well, uh, this part of the game is a slog for quite literally no reason. Because you literally just have to mash on the AP roulette for a while. Like, still can't get anywhere. Okay. No, 
now we can start to get somewhere. Oh, Larry here has a deck. When I get back to the city, it will be as a king. Oh, this guy doesn't actually talk in the anime. I don't know why they gave him dialogue. He also never moves his fingers from that position, so... Dark Hunter with uh, literally zero dark monsters. Okay, well, you know what? Dark Resonate is good. Um, then we'll set Genki Break and pass. We can actually make Magical Android next turn. Oh my god, he's playing Gather Your Mind. Again, gonna really hope that Distant Boom was a, uh, a firework. Set. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna get rid of that background. I'm not necessarily worried about it, but I also don't think I'll ever get to use Dark Hunter this tool, so... It was the Gather Your Mind. Okay. Sure. Destructotron with no other psychics. Very funny. Well, we can actually make another psychic, but I'm gonna do that after the battle phase. So right now, having Sasuke Samurai up is better, in my opinion. Sagi the Dark Clown. You know, maybe I'm actually giving this guy too much credit. Maybe I don't need to make a synchro. Sanctity. Remove from play all cards in your hand and from your side of the field, draw cards until you have two cards in your hand. Incredible. Another masterful gambit from Larry. <laughs> okay. Okay, Larry, sure. Oh, hey. So normal summon Marauding Captain. Activate its effect. Special Summon Destructotron from our hands. Doesn't quite kill, but gets pretty close. Okay, well, uh, time to kill Larry then, I suppose. Just gonna send Destructotron after the set. Oh shit! Destructotron only has two turns to live! Thank you, Larry! Yeah, Larry didn't pay out shit. Okay. Is is the large man trapped in 
to hell being shock tortured Lenny. Is that who that is? I don't actually know. I actually only recognize that guy as the shopkeeper from the Tag Horse games. What do we get? 400 DP! Nice! Um, let's head to the shop and uh, see if we can't get more psychics. Special attack, special attack 2 has a Colossal Fighter on it. Colossal Fighter is a really good card. Um, but I, I, you know, I think we're actually just going to go for more Ghost Genesis. Psychic Snail, very good. I think Grapple Blocker is okay. Telepathic Power, a third copy, very good. Another Geared Town. Geared Town's great. Third Geared Town. That is a pretty damn good opening. Gravel Blocker. Cyclone Monster your opponent controls. Cyclone Monster cannot attack or be tributed while this card remains facing in the field. During each of your end phases, pay 500, 500 life points or destroy this card. This card's not very good. Yeah, those are the main things. Just uh, Psychic Snail and uh, Third Telepathic Power, which we're definitely playing. Let's take out Fiend Mega Cyber, actually. Well, no, I'd actually rather take out Dark Hunter first. Because that lowers our overall number of darks, which makes Dark Hunter harder to use. If he's... <sighs> hmm. I've just thought about how, like, kind of nonsense he is. his name. He's the the Dark Hunter, so like he gets stronger if Darks are dead? I'm not really sure how that correlates. And he's also a Dark Monster himself. Okay. Alright, what's up with this? Stop, panel. Hey, are you making good use of my PDA net shop? Who, me? I'm Rathy, owner of the net shop accessible via your PDA. Oh yes, I almost forgot. For stopping by to talk with me, here's a present. If you can beat me in a duel, I'll give you a card. You ready? Then let's duel. Okay, you know what? You know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. even show up in 5Ds? Like, what's up with him? What's his deal? Okay, uh... Summon the Psychic Snail. This guy is playing a 60-card deck. not anticipating needing to use telepathic power at the moment, so I'll hold it. See, if my opponent does 
that, I will simply trap hole it. That's all he had. Okay. Yeah, it is definitely way better to summon Destructo Tron here. So then I can use Psychic Snail's effect for the first time. Pay 800. And now Destructo Tron attacks twice. Oh, you know what? I forgot that it, like, sacrifices Psychic Snail's attack. That's fine. We'll just set Telepathic Power and pass. Familiar Possessed Asa. Okay. Attack over Destructotron, that's fine. And I'm gonna telepathic power it. This guy's playing like a charmer deck, I see. a little bit scary. She's cracked. Okay. I don't know what I expected. Fortunately, there's no way to make a tuner or make a synchro right now. So we'll just let Psychic Snail kill. traveling to the shop between floors. Whoa, you're a tough one. Okay then, take this with you. One of my most precious cards. Make good use of it, okay? What is he giving me? Dark Magician Girl. Uh, thanks? And they make me roulette one more time. Like, why is this a fucking board game? That's enough. The final duel is to win entry to the tower have just been decided. Great! That was a breeze, wasn't it, you say? Yeah. Leo, you're getting a bit overexcited. Seems you've made it through to the next round, too. The remaining duelists are to make their way into Yggdrasil, where their, the rules for stage 2 will be explained. Okay, let's go, you say. Magician girl, how useful. Okay, I suppose the game wants us to press onward in to the next. What on earth? Is there like a fucking police? chase happening outside? <laughs> I mean, look, I cannot close my window right now because it's like fucking 90 degrees in my room despite it being midnight. I love climate change. Um, 
you know, uh, thanks Chevron, Shell, fucking every oil company. Um, th like, I swear to fucking God, the streets outside my window sound like fucking demons in the middle of the night. It's awful. So this is Yggdrasil. Hey, hold on, let me in too. To accept defeat is the virtue of a great duelist. If you do not understand that, then you should not have come. What? what what's that? Don't you insult me, treating me like I'm some kind of satellite scum? Are they done? Holy shit. I hate people with loud-ass cards who think they need to have their car be audible to absolutely everybody. Um, it doesn't. I don't care if you own a car. Shut the fuck up. Be quiet. Thanks. Oh, so the cor now the cornered dog bears its fangs. Ha ha ha. Perfect. You'll do well as a demonstration to explain the rules for inside of Ig Yggdrasil. What? Start up the Ragnarok system. Come forth, Transcender. Gotta sound like a chainsaw every time you start your car. Yeah. What is that? Is that a suit of armor? This is the result of melding ancient wisdom and modern science. My own creation, the ultimate man-made duelist, the Transcender. There are transcenders positioned on each floor of Yggdrasil. In order to proceed to the next floor, the transcender must be defeated. The requirements to challenge the transcender are different for each floor. I'll explain at each er, I'll explain as at each stage of the tournament. Is that a typo in the translation? Chief Armstrong, I shall allow you the privilege to be the first to challenge the transcender. If you can defeat it, I shall allow you entry into the tower. Well, he doesn't even have Iron Chain Dragon. He's fucked. Heh, <laughs> is that all I have to do? I'm not gonna lose to some piece of junk. I'm ready. Ha, huh, very well. Let the duel commence. Don't make me watch it. Okay, come on, you piece of trash. It's my turn. Trace Duelist. Set it complete. Begin duel. Huh? What's that? Hey, you say, what's happening? Luna, you can feel it too. Yeah, this is no ordinary puppet. That's Gregor's deck, isn't it? If it has the same power as him. Which one is Gregor again? I think he's one of the dark designers. So maybe this is past the halfway mark? I remember. Gregor has the whale, doesn't he? Out of the Earthbound Immortals, I think. I don't know. I'm pulling from knowledge from, like, a DS game that covers that arc. I haven't actually watched the 5Ds anime, so. Huh, that Chief Armstrong guy doesn't have the skills to win this. Gregor, that was the guy you were completely powerless against, wasn't it? I wasn't completely powerless. I just couldn't get a good hit in. Same thing. Well, I could beat him now, anyway. Yeah, right. Quiet, it's over. Yeah, I saw that coming. Duel over. Ha! He was all talk. Chief Armstrong, so quickly. The demonstration is over. Now you have witnessed the true power of the Transcender. Very well, are you ready? Forward to victory, duelists. And then we're going to uh, stop because it's somehow already been two hours. I don't know fucking how. We went through one floor. Oh my god. Okay, so this one is like one of the main aims. <laughs> if we're gonna be uh, opening packs for like a specific deck, um, Dragunity is like really good. But period.
it's just a really good deck. Um. Okay. I'm being tempted three different ways. Do we expand our psychics? Do we try to pull maybe some of the new psychics that might probably maybe exist in Crossroads of Chaos and maybe try to pull a uh, Black Rose Dragon? Or do we go for Drag Unity to have like this really good archetype for her? Keep in mind that we definitely won't be able to build Drag Unity out of these 10 packs. It's definitely not possible. I think this one only shows up every time your win rate is like a multiple of like six or something. It's really weird. But basically every like certain amount of duels this thing will show up in the shop. I'm kind of leaning on going towards Crossroads of Chaos because we kind of have everything. Well, I mean, we're still missing multiple copies of Destructotron and Telekinetic Shocker, I guess. Um, but Crossroads of Chaos isn't always here. Duel's Genesis is always here. So I'm, I'm leaning on Duel's Genesis, actually. Or not Duel's Genesis, uh, Crossroads of Chaos. Um, could do five of each. Well, actually, okay. We're definitely doing five Crossroads of Chaos. I don't think we'll need five Duelist Genesis. We can just get, like, a couple more Crossroads of Chaos. You know what? Because it's here, we'll get one pack of a Dragon Unity set. See what we can pull. Power Injector, that's actually a really good card. We're definitely playing that. Uh, eh. That pack wasn't super fantastic. Queen of Thorns? We got some uh, plant stuff. Stormcaller, I think, is okay. I think it's a tribute monster, though. But, you know, by our standards, it might make the cut. Destructotron! Okay, that's good. And Montage Dragon? Okay. Okay, what drug unities can we get? Zero! Awesome! Okay, what's Stormcaller do? This is level 6, 23. You can put your opponent's monsters to the sword by battle with other Psyche-type monsters on top of their owner's deck instead of sending them to the graveyard. When this card is destroyed by a card effect, this card's controller takes damage equal to its original attack. This card sucks. We're not playing it. Definitely playing Destructotron. Uh, we did pull a new Synchro, but I don't think we'll play it. Power Injector. Once per turn, you can pay... 600 life points to have all psychic type monsters gain 500 attack during this turn. Very solid card. I think it's level 3 as well. No, it's level 4. Okay. And. Second like level 8 monster you can control. Okay, we don't have any level 8s we're gonna play ever. Well, other than, I guess. Stardust Dragon. Activate only during damage calculation when the attack of your battling monster is lower than the attack of your opponent's and pay life points equal to the difference in attack. Your opponent, your monster gains attack equal to that difference plus 300 during the damage calculation only. I think we play that. I think that's good enough. Tuner plus one or more non-tuner plant type monsters. Each player must pay a thousand life points to normal or special stuff and a non-plant from the hand. I don't think... Uh, it's never going to be good to make, is the problem. So yeah, we're definitely not playing that. That was a tiny bit of a bust, I suppose. We are going to edit our deck before we stop. You know, actually, if I had remembered that we didn't have any Krebins, or, like, any extra copies of Krebins, I would have probably 
opened all Duelist Genesis thinking about it. Because we need copies of Krevin's. Uh, where's our power injector? There he is. I mean, I guess we include her in the extra deck. There's no reason not to. We pulled, like, gigantic Cephalotus. Which is, if nothing else, just better than Gaga Gigo. So we can technically make her, I just don't think it'll ever be worthwhile. And you know what, we'll bring Divine Neos along as well. I didn't even talk about him when we pulled him. This card's summon condition is nonsense. This card cannot be special summoned except by a fusion summon. Of any five, Neos, Neospatian, Elemental Hero, Destiny Hero, or Evil Hero monsters, including at least one Neos monster, one Neospatian monster, and one Hero monster. This is kind of gibberish. It's like, really hard to parse. Uh, I don't think he's even that good either. Once per turn, remove from play one Neos, Neospatian, Elemental Hero, Destiny Hero, or Evil Hero monster from your graveyard. To have this card gain 500 attack. This card also gains the removed monster's effects until the end of the turn. Okay, he's not super good. Definitely not enough to, like, warrant, uh, you know, all that nonsense around summoning him. Okay, what can I remove? We're at the point where making cuts is going to get a little bit more, um, difficult. So, we can take out... I still like the Sinister Sprockets, honestly. Turning any of our level 4s into a level 5 Synchro is nice. Um... We can remove Command Knight, probably. He's not very good in the way that our deck is, like, shaping up. And... I kind of like this guy more now because him and Krevens is uh, Stardust Dragon, and he can be special summoned. So that can lead, theoretically, to some quick Stardusts. shaping up. Okay. You know what? Here, let's do the AP Roulette real fast. Just so we can get that, like, one item. There. Let's turn those into packs. <laughs> Three more packs of Duelist Genesis, you know, that might get us like something that we need. I'm hoping for more Krevins, specifically. Uh, that is our Third or fourth Psychic Snail? Wind Barrel Dragon, not super good. Fourth Dr. Granium. Um, yeah, that's our third Psychic Snail, at least. It's like, okay. Defense Draw, maybe we play, but I kind of... I don't know. It's not... Let's just put in the Psychic Snail and call it a night. Yeah, great. 
It's at the top. Psychic Snake, wherever it is. There it is. And... I don't know what to drop here. Uh... Let's remove Warrior Deck Record. That's much better. Okay. Alright, with that, I'm just gonna call that a stream, I think. Okay, well, you know, this game's actually kind of fun. In a strange way. I do wonder how many floors there are in this game. Maybe I'll look that up between streams. Alright, well, uh, you know, I suppose that's, uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, thank you guys for watching. It was quite fun. Um, I'm gonna go relax for a little while and not feel bad about the fucking hell noises that are coming in through my window for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, okay. Good night, Robert. Good night, everybody.